Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and today we are taking a look at an ultra budget friendly Submariner homage watch, the Addis Dive MY-H3, a quartz diver that was the most purchased watch on the recent double 11 sale on AliExpress. Is it worth your time and money? Let's find out. I too bought this watch on the Chinese Singles Day sale and paid, hold on to your seats, 33 US dollars for it. Its normal price, when there's no sale going on, is just under 50 bucks. And you do have a choice of different colorways and different straps. The price stays the same if you choose to go with the bracelet, and that's what I recommend you do. You can always source for different straps later, but you would struggle to find a perfectly fitting bracelet if at some point you decide you want one. Addis Dive is one of those brands selling homage watches on AliExpress, and I did review one of their offerings in the past. The automatic flicker that I was super impressed with and still keep in my collection. The watch comes in the familiar hard plastic watch box we are used to see with many AliExpress watches. It is padded with foam on the inside, and you get the traditional non-signed warranty card, a little hang tag, an instruction manual, and the tool for resizing the bracelet. Let's get the measurements. The width of the case is 41 mm, its thickness is 13.2, the distance between the lugs is 20 mm, and the bracelet tapers down to 17.5 and a half at the clasp. Lug tip to lug tip is 48 mm, and after I removed four links of the bracelet, the watch weighs 137 grams. It is water resistant to 200 meters, which is quite rare to see at this price point. The dial is black with a glassy piano finish. There's a white printed mini track around its edge and a set of highly polished and loom filled applied indices after that. This is the classic Rolex style layout a downwards facing triangle at the 12 o'clock position, batons on the 6 and 9, and circles everywhere else, except for the 3 o'clock position where we do have a date complication window with a cyclops magnifier right above it. The date wheel is white, and the numbers are printed on it in black, and the cyclops seems to be doing a good job in magnifying the date. Eddie's Dive's name and logo are found under the 12 o'clock triangle, and Divers 200 is printed above the 6 o'clock baton. I really wish they didn't put that on the dial, as your watch has to be ISO certified for you to be able to put the Divers 200 tagline on the dial. The hands are classic, high-polished Mercedes-style hands, and all three of them are filled with loom on their centers. The bezel is made of stainless steel and has knurlings that provide perfect grip. It houses a ceramic dive time bezel insert. Wait, it houses a fully loomed ceramic dive time bezel insert. Yeah, where all the markings are deeply and neatly engraved with an added loomed pip at the center of the 12 o'clock triangle. This is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The bezel action is not the best, and though it doesn't feel as teeny as I thought it would, there is some unwanted freedom and back play, and it doesn't sit firmly in one position. The alignment of the bezel with the dial is not perfect either, but I've seen worse on far more expensive watches. The loom department is where this watch shines. Literally. The hands and indices on this ultra-budget friendly timepiece are actually filled with C3 Superluminova, recognizable by the green light it emits, while the markings on the bezel are filled with BGW9 Superluminova, as you can see by the icy blue light. That's crazy, right? Sure, it's not the heaviest applied loom on earth, but did I mention I paid 33 bucks for this watch? It can definitely go up against some of the big boys and come out a winner, including everyone's favorite Casio Duro and the Invicta Pro Diver. 
The crystal covering the dial is a mineral glass, no surprises there, but also not a big deal at this price point. It is flat and it protrudes ever so slightly over the bezel. What did surprise me about the crystal is that it has some anti-reflective coating applied to its underside. I honestly did not expect it to have any. The case is made of 316L stainless steel and there's nothing original about its design. But it is very nicely made. It is brushed on the tops of the lugs and polished on the sides of the case. The non-signed crown at the 3 o'clock position is somewhat protected by the crown guards, has gnarling for excellent grip, and it screws down into place. Screw it out and pull it out to the first operating position to flip through the days of the month, and pull it out again to set the time. The case back is a solid chunk of stainless steel. It is completely sterile, with no markings on it whatsoever, and it screws down to help get this watch up to 200 meters of water resistance. The quartz movement ticking inside the Edis Dive MYH3 is a Japan-made Miyota 2115, a zero joules movement that provides high accuracy of plus minus 20 seconds per month and up to three years of battery life. The bracelet this Sabi homage comes on is a 3 links oyster style bracelet with a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. The center links are polished and the side links are brushed on top and polished on their sides. These are solid stainless steel links held together with push pins. The end links are actually solid as well, not something you'd normally find on a watch at this price. The end links do have protruding male middle links which bring the overall length of the watch up to 53 mm. The clasp is simple, yet effective pressed stainless steel, with a security latch, double pusher security system, and three holes for micro-adjustment. Just like the crown at the case back, the clasp too is unbranded. On my 7-inch wrist, doesn't it look nice? Nothing about the way it looks gives away the fact that it's a budget watch. It doesn't feel like a luxury watch, but it wears very comfortable and has a healthy heft to it. The protruding end links don't overhang off my wrist, mainly thanks to their significant down curve. If you have smaller wrists, that might become an issue though. Legibility is good as expected of a diver, and it does look very nice when paired with different straps. Now let's quickly go over the pros and cons of the Edis Dive MYH3. Starting with the cons today, this is by no means an originally designed watch. It rides the coattails of the success and popularity of the Rolex Submariner it homages, like many other watches out there. That being said, I feel that for the $33 I paid for this watch, I don't really have any right to complain about anything. Everything I'm about to say is perfectly acceptable for the price it costs, even when it's not on sale. Nothing I can say can make this watch not worth the price. Now that that's clear, I can point out the mineral crystal, the pressed clasp, the bezel's alignment, and the protruding end links as things it would be nice to have upgraded. The case could be thinner too, considering the fact that this is a quartz-operated watch, but I believe that this is the same case they use on their NH35 powered automatic version, and that's just the way for them to keep the price down. Some people don't like quartz watches, but I personally love having some pieces in my collection I can grab and go, knowing they're all set, and show the correct time and date. Looking at the pros on the other hand, this watch has some features and qualities you would never expect to see on a watch costing 50 bucks or less. For that money, you get a solid stainless steel construction of the case, crown, bezel, case back and bracelet that does have solid links and solid end links as well. The finishing is nothing to be ashamed of and is really quite good. You get a fully loomed ceramic bezel insert 
and two-toned superluminova, illuminating the entire watch like a Christmas tree. A Cyclops magnifier that actually magnifies pretty well, a Japanese movement that might not be high-end, but you can still count on to be accurate and reliable. And to top it all off, you get 200 meters of water resistance with both a screw-down crown and case back. This is an awesome value for money watch, and I honestly can't understand how they even make money selling these, especially during sales and promotions. That's my take on it anyway. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to check it out for yourselves and maybe even pick one up, I will leave my affiliate link in the description of this video. It will not cost you any extra money, but will help the channel with a small commission. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a more personal level. Here is a quick link to my review of the Addis Dive Flieger and to another video you might enjoy. I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.